This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and tonight we have on the bench a 17-inch Phil Co. Predicta black and white TV from the late 50s. This belongs to a friend, and he doesn't really want me to repair the set. He wants me to check the vital organs, such as the CRT and flyback transformer, just to make sure they're okay. He said he could take care of the chassis service, so, but he doesn't want to overhaul the chassis just to find out that the CRT is a dud, so we're going to try to help him out with that. Then we have a new toy here, a CR, uh, Syncor CR70 CRT tester. I uh, lucked out on this. It was at one of the local flea markets of all places for 20 bucks, so it came home with me. And this one's in better shape than my old B and K testers that are about to bite the dust. Okay, we have everything set as per the setup chart. And let's move our let's move our selector switch to HK shorts, heater to cathode short, that's good. G1 short, that's good. Cut off. We'll turn our cutoff knob until the pointer reads into the little black area there. Whoop, whoop, up, back down. That's good. Now, read emission. That's not bad. Now, let's check the life of the tube. We we'll just press the life test button and see what the pointer does. And it's going down into the bad area. And our little chart that comes in the instruction book that fortunately was still with the unit gives some guidelines for interpreting the live test function. If the meter doesn't move when you press the button. You've generally got 12 months or longer on the life of the tube. Drops a quarter inch but still remains in the good area between 8 and 12 months. Bottom of the good area between 4 and 8 months. And when it moves into the bad area you've got less than 4 months of life remaining. Now again that's just a guesstimate but uh, I wouldn't really invest too much time or money in this set, knowing that the tube is basically, according to this, on its life last leg. But this is also the same as a doctor telling a patient that you've only got three months to live. They don't know that, so you could live for years. But at least for now, the tube is testing good, so we will run some other tests on the chassis and see if there's anything major wrong with it. And just eyeballing the flyback from what I can see of it, it doesn't look like it's torched. So hopefully it'll be good. Notice someone's done some work on this. They replaced the the factory off-on switch. It's part of the volume control with a toggle switch. Frankly, the toggle switch is probably more reliable than the switch that Philco decided to use. And we have the chassis removed to the cabinet for easier service. Uh, made an ohm meter check across the AC input here and there's nothing. And as I look closer I see that this fusible resistor has expired. Uh, those were not that great in the first place. These are some kind of made out of some kind of material that I always call them sand resistors because they, the body of them is some kind of grainy material that absorbs moisture and you can see that this one's all corroded and is busted in two, likely from a combination of heat and moisture. And we now have continuity across the 
AC input. Apparently I had to flip this switch a few times to, to get it to make connection, but we're reading 3.2 ohms across the primary side. I will need to dig up a resistor and temporarily clip in here. I don't have the schematic for this set in front of me, so I don't know what value resistor to use, but it, it shouldn't be critical. Something, you know, 8, 10, 22 ohms, something in that range should do for a test. Okay, we have 120 volts AC applied. I'm checking our DC voltage at the plate cap of the horizontal output tube with the cap removed, of course. We're getting about 269 volts, so we know the power supply is working. Okay, we're not getting any kind of arc at the plate cap of the tube, but we are getting horizontal drive to the control grid of the output tube. That's pin 5. We're reading about negative 39 volts. That seems about right. And on the screen grid pin, we're getting about, I think about 216, which is probably acceptable. Okay, I have the high voltage cap removed from the rectifier tube and I'm hearing high voltage hissing there and you can see the tube is glowing a nice pretty bluish purple glow so that doesn't speak highly of the tube does it? Testing the tube on the tube tester we get absolutely nothing so let's dig around in my junk and see if we can find a 1B3 somewhere. I hope we have one here. Okay, we installed a new rectifier tube and I hear the horizontal oscillator but still no screen illumination. Only thing I get is when I turn it off I get a bright dot in the center of the screen. Which is usually an indication of a very, very, very weak picture tube. I know we tested the tube with a Syncor tester, but I think I'm going to go dig up another tester and check it just to be on the safe side. Here's the Syncor tester that actually belongs to the owner of this television set. So we can look up the CRT type number. It's a 17DRP4. Seventeen DRP four filament two point six eight bias B and socket four. So we want to have our bias switch set to B. Filament voltage on two. We need socket four. That's this guy right here. Him what? Yes. Okay, let's do this again if the phone will stop making sounds. Alright, heater to cathode shorts. That's red on the top scale. That's good. G1 shorts. Also red on the top scale. That's good. Gun balance. Also known as cutoff. And this is what we adjust for that. And we adjust it to right about come on back down. Right about there. And then we move to emission. And this tube is indeed good. We're getting about the same reading on this tester as we did on the other Syncor, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blame it on the CRT being weak in this set, seeing as how it's checking good on both testers. Now we'll press the life test button, see what happens. You remember before it fell down on the other tester and it's starting to drop down on this one too Yeah, I don't like that. This tube really doesn't have a whole lot of life left in it, but it'll do for a while.
Okay, so we can feel confident that the picture tube is in decent shape, at least for now. Okay, I'm not checking the high voltage using the high voltage test function of this CRT tester, and we're running a little under 20 kV, according to this, so that should be plenty sufficient enough. So that tells us that the high voltage and flyback and all of that are good, so we need to find out why the screen's not lighting up. So yeah, we're running about 18 kV, looking at this a little bit closer. And this tube setup chart gives us the nominal high voltage for each CRT, and it says 17.6 kV for this particular tube. So I'd say we're in limits. This is a good time to say, if you do a lot of work on tube type televisions, and when I say tube type, I mean sets that contain vacuum tubes other, other than the CRT, it seems like in today's HD flat screen world, a uh, tube TV means a set with a picture tube from 2009, but my definition of a tube TV is a set that's got a bunch of vacuum tubes in it, but Anyway, if you're going to work on older tube sets, you really need a high voltage probe. And more modern solid state sets, it's not really a big deal because most of those sets you either have the correct amount of high voltage or you don't. But in tube sets, there's many things that can cause the high voltage to be wonky and, and checking to make sure you have the correct high voltage can lead you to other problems. Now, I have a high voltage probe somewhere but I'm ashamed to say that I've misplaced it so we're just using the one that's part of this CRT tester. We have this probe here that measures up to 10 kV for checking focus voltage or you can slide this big long red thing onto the focus probe and you can go up to 50,000 volts which is ample enough for, for most TV applications and to measure the voltage you just simply set your selector switch to focus and high voltage and you read it on the appropriate scale here. And something else I'll say, these tube socket test adapters are, are truly a godsend for working on sets like this where it's a real pain in the butt to get to the tube pins under on the tube socket under the board because of the way it's mounted. With these test adapters I can just simply plug the adapter onto the board, plug the tube into the adapter, and I have convenient test points to test the voltages on all pins. I don't think these are made anymore, but they still show up on eBay and and ham fest and antique radio meets, that sort of thing. Okay, I have the speaker connected and I'm getting a slight bit of crackle from the speaker. But this set still has a ton of problems. We know it has HV, we know the CRT is good, and that's the main thing the owner wanted me to check out. I went ahead and soldered this fusible resistor to the chassis, but I'd suggest obtaining the schematic for this set and installing the right value part. I just simply solder the resistor onto the original plug-in connector so you can just unplug it. I don't think we have vertical deflection because I can usually hear the yoke making a little low level noise and I'm not getting that. And we have no video on the CRT except for the dot whenever we turn the set off. So yeah, I would suggest to the owner to get a schematic and get you a very large table that you can disassemble this thing on and make sure you have a lot of time on your hands to devote to this and take your time working on it. You'll have to rebuild all of these couplets and here's an example of one of those right here. 
in the SAMS photo fact will show you the value of all of the internal parts and you can just build the circuit on a small piece of board, little perf board and of course all of these capacitors, these plastic paper capacitors need to go and while you have the board out you'd be better off to check all of the resistors and make sure they're in within spec because as big of a pain in the butt as these are to get apart you want to make sure that everything on it's good before you put it all back together because you don't want to have to be pulling this apart again if you don't have to but yeah these TVs are a nice looking novelty but they're a, honestly they're a technician's nightmare in fact, the older gentleman who was my mentor back in the early 90s when I was a young teenager had a TV shop when these were fairly new. And he said that he got to the point where he wouldn't even take one in for repair. And if one somehow got left at his shop, then it automatically went straight to the back alley without even plugging it in or doing anything to it. That's how badly he despised these sets. Oh, and one other thing that gives trouble in these is this horizontal phase detector module. When they fail, you won't have a stable horizontal picture. You won't be able to lock it with the horizontal hold, and the picture will be all swimmy. This is actually two diodes and one envelope, or one package. Thinking about tubes there, I guess. But don't worry, you can replace that with a couple of Schottky diodes if this proves to be bad, which I wouldn't be surprised if it is. And it just unplugs. It has a date code of 5917, 17th week of 59, so that can pretty much narrow down the age of this set. And according to my test, with the diode test function on my meter, one half of this diode pack is bad. Usually the center pin is common cathode, so, but before you take my word for that, we'll need to dig up the schematic and double check, but you probably will have to replace this because one of the sections, according to my meter, is open, and that will cause horizontal stability problems. Okay, I'm testing tubes, and this 6EA8 shows excessive grid emission as in gas so you might want to replace that and it goes right here our 6CG7 horizontal oscillator and driver tube shows a little bit of grid leakage on one section but it may still function as it should the set obviously has high voltage so you know that'll be up to you whether or not to replace it and it goes in this socket right here and our 6DE6, one of the IF amplifier tubes, shows some leakage and some grid emission. So you probably want to replace that. It goes in this middle socket here. And before the battery runs dead, another couple of common problems with these are crappy tube sockets that don't make contact. You might remember the video that Shango did on this subject a while back and also bad connections on the PC board. And that's really about all I can think of that there are really common problems on these so once you fix all of those things that I mentioned it'll probably fire up and work for you. And this first 6D6 also shows some grid leakage. You might want to replace both of these. Well, we got some good news. I'm feeding a signal from a converter box into the tuner input. As you can hear, we're getting some audio. So that tells us the tuner and IF is working. But we still have no video on the screen. And I would suspect the problem there would be in the video output stage. Get your video working and get your vertical deflection fixed and most of your battle will be solved.